Now, movies, 4th of July, they go together like something else does. So? They sure do, yes. And front and center is Eclipse. Mm -hmm. The nightest in the Twilight movies. I understand you might be catching Eclipse, is that right? I see going to that as somewhat of a violation of man law, but as a requirement of date night, yes, I'm seeing it. Well, I understand you're not a member of the Twilighters, the Twila Band, as I like to think of it. But is it good? I got good news for you. It's the best of the three films so far in the Twilight series. A, it's got romantic triangle and a big fight. So that's what we like right. about movies. And the other thing is, there's nothing more boring than a high school person who knows exactly what she's doing with the rest of her life. So they send people at Bella in this movie. We have Anna Kendrick as a valedictorian challenging Bella. We have an unhappy vampire challenging Bella. And we have, of course, the washboard abs of Taylor Lautner challenging Bella's conviction for her vampiric devotion in this film. So. And let's be honest, that's why I'm going. How about the, the other, other great thing is really short line for the men's room. <laughs> yeah, that, that's for sure. All right, now the other one that's getting a lot of buzz, Last Airbender, Sh um, Shyamalan, you know, it's supposed to be a big deal, what do you think? Yeah, this is a kind of a shame because it's not that good. There's a uh, lot of hateration, as Mary J. Blige would uh, say. In the dancery. Out, yeah, out there on the uh, on the web for his contributions to this movie. The problem is not an absence of imagination, but a surfeit of it. There's just too much to take in on the screen. So many storylines, so many things, and it's all kind of grim. There's not enough fun on screen. And when you want to create a new world, whether it's Star Wars or Lord of the Rings, there has to be something exciting exhilarating and fun in it. And at 94 minutes, there isn't enough of that to make this a really good watch. And let's be honest, we have enough heavy things going on in the world right now. You want to go to the movies, a little escape would be nice. Let me ask Chris Connolly, forget about what they tell us we want to see. What do you like out there? I really like Grown Ups, and I was kind of surprised by that. The Adam Sandler movie yeah, really? with all of his posse. Sandler kind of taking on a kind of a senior role now in comedy, not so much the raunch of the past. This one is warm and sweet. It's a great date movie. In fact, it might be perfect payback for going to see Eclipse. I had a great time. <laughs> Well, I think, look, that, if you went, you know, you, you pass all the man law tests so that I'm going to be okay going. Your lips to God's ear. <laughs> right. Sandler, you know what I've always loved about that guy? It seems like he makes the movies he wants to make, and he brings his friends around him, and they're successful. That's absolutely right, and the thing that's so striking about it is he's making movies now where he sort of looks at the Hollywood lifestyle he's a part of with a little distaste, with a little unhappiness. What's going on with his kids? What goes on to his lifestyle? And it makes them kind of interesting, but not so much the bathroom stuff, not so much mm -hmm. the hardcore sex stuff. It's a PG-13, and it's it's an easy watch, and everyone's funny. The blue chemical in the pool. That always is, well, there's a little of the bathroom you stuff, You gotta sure. watch out, my brother. Nothing like a good uh, water park joke, yes. You got Despicable Me up over your shoulder here. Is that good for the kids? How do you like it? Well, we, we, we await, but there are three movies that I'm interested to see this July. Let's we start it. with Inception. That's director Christopher Nolan, the guy who gave us The Dark Knight, working with Leonardo DiCaprio mm -hmm. this time, and an unlimited budget, taking us inside the world of dreams. Let's see what he can do when he's really set loose. Salt with Angelina Jolie. Lee. How fitting that someone who lives so many different public identities in her life, as an actress, as a mom, as a spouse, as a you know an activist, should actually now play a character with mysterious identities on screen. So I want to see that. And then the kids are all right. Cross programming in the middle of the summertime. Annette Bening and uh, Julianne Moore as a same-sex couple whose kids track down their sperm donor. It's either Moxie or Chutzpah to put out a movie like that in the middle of of all the bang bang that summer brings but i'm curious to see if they can make it work that's, that's in a great palette there too they got a little bit of everything yeah. very nice leo is this going to be a big break we can hear oscar talk i think that you know we're it's a very mysterious movie it's all inside christopher nolan's head we haven't heard that much about it he has great taste in picking his projects mm -hmm. and his directors and this is another great example of that they, and he doesn't get enough credit for the intelligence of his choices at leo well it's a way to run your career a lot of people should take lessons from him i think mm, maybe me well we won chris conley <laughs> great thank you so you. much best for the fourth of july same to you thank you for the 411 Happy to All provide. Right.